thank you for joining me today. Um, so starting off, what are you most excited about for this year? What What do you think about that gets you excited with the players or the team in general? Well, I mean, first of all, I'm excited the fact that I, I think that we got a lot of guys that are, are, are very dedicated, guys that are uh, working very hard. And we have uh, one of the better teams that we've had lately, most talented teams. I'm excited the fact that uh, we got two big breaks by the NCAA would rule in uh, Erickson eligible and O'Brien eligible to play for us, and that's great leadership from both those guys. And uh, just our entire team, I think it's good. Our starting pitching's outstanding. Just got to figure out the bullpen really to get that done, and we should have a good year. Do you, what do you think of your um, your preseason ranking? Uh, well, the rankings I, I think are important that you rank just because that means you got some players. And uh, the real deal is, as a coach, you want players. Uh, uh, we're ranked 13th in the, the coaches poll, which is the one I look at most. And the top 40, not top 40, but 40 coaches, I think it is, vote on that. And Do you vote in it? No, I don't. I did, but I don't anymore. I got kicked off. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, but, uh, but uh, I used to vote on it. And, uh, but I, uh, I like being voted somewhere between 10th, 12th, 15th, something. I mean, you got some pretty good players. I, I, I would say I don't want to be ranked number one before the season starts, but it means you got great talent, great talent. So that's not all bad either. But I like the rankings. Uh, I think it's very important. It's, a, it's another tool to motivate your players to look at the rankings, see where you're ranked uh, with a goal of saying, I want to be in the top eight in the country come tournament time because it gives you a chance to host the regionals and super regionals. So I think it's very important. Now, you guys haven't hosted a, a super regional in a while. Is that is that a main goal for this year? I mean, besides, obviously, the winning a national championship goal. It's just part of the process to me to put yourself in the best position you can to to win. You know, when you keep when you go on the road and you're playing people that are ranked ahead of you mm -hmm. on the road, then, you know, it, it puts the odds against you, no question about that. So the fact if you can be the highest ranked team in your regional and be at home and be the favorite, which means you're probably the best, and, you know, to me, that's where you want to be. And it takes a very consistent effort throughout the season uh, to put yourself in that position with some quality players. Just trying to expand just from just talking about the baseball on the field, what is it like behind the scenes in the locker room when you're talking to players when it's not, you know, out on the field? Is it, is it you know, a candid relationship or is it more of a, you know, professional-ish relationship, I guess? With I would say probably with me it's more professional, even though I try to joke around with some, but the, the real fact is I'm a lot older than my players and, and I make out the lineup. and. Uh, and I think sometimes players are, you know, a little standoffish to that point. Uh, the older I get, the, the more I try to get involved with the players. I remember I was a head coach when I was 24 years old in college, and I had a player who was 22, so I had to separate myself. Now my job is more to try to, to get with them. And uh, so the players can probably answer that question better than I do. Uh, you know, I'm very comfortable around the players, and, uh, you know, I have a good time with them, and I bust them when I feel like I need to particular joke you laid on them or that you can that you can talk about I guess. <laughs> well that's a good story the uh, you know the players are always messing with you and I think that's good when you got players who can mess with you a little bit too uh, my my worst favorite story is <laughs> is probably we're, we're in the regionals and we're standing in the dugout and it's raining like crazy and Richard Giannotti has been in pro ball now for a while uh, uh, G goes uh, what's the weather supposed to be and I go what do I look like a weatherman or something he goes, I thought old people watched the weather all the time. I had absolutely no comeback. That's the one player that got me. I had no comeback for him. So, so now every time he calls me, if I don't answer my phone, he didn't even leave his name. Just call him to check on the weather in Miami. <laughs> so, so you got to be able to have a good time, too. So we have a lot of, I guess, new coaches here at the Miami. You're one of the most tenured coaches here. Um, have you... The most, oh, well, the most tenured coach. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go with that. He said it. <laughs> um, so, have you been able to talk to them? They come to you, maybe um, just because you've been here so long. It's like, what's it like in Miami working with administration, with the with the facilities here? Have you had any interaction with them at all? I may have any interaction uh, in particular with Coach Golden and Coach Larinaga. Uh, Coach Golden more because we've got. Uh, uh, David Thompson coming in and plays both sports, so we recruited him together. Uh, he was actually committed to baseball first, and, and then we got him committed to both. And, and, and then uh, 
Uh, we now have another football player that's coming to try out for the team, so he's he's very good at doing that. So we talk we talk about issues at the University of Miami and stuff. And I mean, Coach Larinaga texted me last night at 5:45 before the game to ask me a question. So I've been here a long time. Those guys are, are new. They've been here for one season basically, and uh, they asked me questions. The fact I've been here for a long time, but I I, I think they're both great hires and great guys and. Uh, and I think we're going to do very well in both those sports. The other coaches have been here a little bit longer, so I don't, I don't have as much of a, a relationship. I mean, if I need to call Paige, then I call Paige or whatever it may be, and we may talk about this or that. But the real deal is the newer coaches have more questions related to school, you know, not X's and O's, but school and, and how that situations are going on here. All right, so have you seen the movie Moneyball? Yes, absolutely. All right, that was good. I actually, actually, um, you, I actually asked Stephen to make sure that you saw it because I wanted to ask you, what do you think of that system in Moneyball? Um, it's completely, I mean, he's kind of knocking, you know, the pe you know, people, I guess, from your type of generation where they, you know, they have all these things. Do you recruit, like, uh, I guess the scouts in there do, or is it kind of a mixture of both? Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a statistics person so I, I love Moneyball and the fact that they're using a lot of stuff based on statistics on base percentages and uh, I think it's got to be a combination of both but uh, I, mean, I like it Theo Epstein's a, is, a, is a good friend and I agree with what he's doing and how he's doing things and uh, at the same time I think that you, you get a feel when you go out there as a, as a coach or as a scout and in my case if I'm a coach I am a scout when I'm out looking at players and I look at a guy and go hey this guy reminds me of Alex Cora then that would be a good thing. That means I'll probably like him. So I like looking at players, and I think, but I, I'm a stats guy too. Show me what you're doing. You know, don't show me great tools and, and can't play with them. We got we to gotta have guys that can, that can win. Uh, we're here to win. We're here to develop players, and don't get me wrong, but we got to have players that uh, can get it done. And we've had a lot of those guys, you know, Yonder and Jamal and uh, all the guys, you know, 14 guys in the big leagues, but those guys were very productive as players at the University of Miami. They weren't guys with great potential. They could play, and great potential means you hadn't done it yet. So I'm a, I'm a stats person, and, and I'll tell you, within 30 minutes when the game's over with, about the middle of the season, I'll have 15 pages of statistics to look at about the game, what we've done that game, and the last 10 games of 15 and 20 in the season, and and that's a problem for me because I go home and read them all every night. So I'm up till two o'clock in the morning looking at statistics. But I, so I'm, I like Moneyball. I liked the movie. I thought it was great. It's a little. I, I probably wouldn't like it if I'm some of the scouts, you know, uh, some of the old time guys. But I'm kind of a combination of both. Moving off the field, what um, what do you when you I know you uh, you don't have much free time. Not a lot of the coaches around here do. But when you got a chance to to lay back and relax, what what takes up most of your time? I, I, li I like working out. I like riding my bike, which I don't do much. I like working out at uh, the complex where I'm at and doing stuff, mo mo mainly aerobic stuff. Uh, of course, I, I got married last year. I have a, I have a son now that's, that's 10 weeks old, so uh, spend a lot of time with my wife and my son right now when I'm when I'm at home. Or and so that takes up a lot of my time. So I said, changing my life at you know at this age, it's my first kid, and and it's. Uh, and it's a very exciting time for, for both of us. Uh, what is your, I guess, favorite type of music? Or cause I know a lot of baseball music, they, everyone has an intro song. What would be your introduction song if, yeah, if you could have one? You know, I've been asked that question, so I'm not a big music person. Really? I'm really not a big music person, so I've been asked that question. I need to figure that out so I can answer it. Answer. <laughs> Was there any of the player songs that when you hear, you kind of like... I, don't know. I would probably like no player songs if I had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard them. <laughs> and when I, when I get to recognize those, signs, I, those songs, I'm in trouble. What's your, um, your pregame routine? Is there a meal? Is there a nap? Is there, you know, I know players are sometimes are really superstitious. So do you the same type of thing? Superstitious a little bit. I joke about being superstitious, but uh, to me, it doesn't work. I'm not, uh, I don't believe, I tried it all. I've tried blowing out candles and, you know, the car with one light going by and the fallen stars and everything else, you know, and, you know, putting on a certain thing. I always joke about, well, you know, you. I put my left sock on before my right sock, but you got to make sure that you got the left sock on your left foot. You got to mark your socks. But you know, now Nike comes out with a left and right on their sock, so I kind of laughed when I saw that. But the real deal is, you know, I, 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 I'm not that superstitious. 
and uh, uh, and I don't care what uniform we wear. I only care who's in the uniform and they're playing hard. And that's what I tell our equipment guy. Just make sure. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm colorblind, so just make sure that I have one uh, uniform in my locker, so I don't dress in the wrong uniform. What colors are you colorblind with? Well, I'm, I, ha I mean, I have trouble with all of them. I just don't look at them. I score zero on a test at. Uh, at the eye doctor, so I've been dressed in the wrong stuff so many times. And uh, last year, I know uh, I came out and I was dressed, and the players, you know, didn't tell me I had on the wrong stuff. And I don't really look at colors, you know, because I don't I don't notice them. And and uh, so it's like 15 minutes before the game, and one of the guys, and they're all looking at me, tells me I got on the wrong uniform. And I kind of looked down at it, and I came this close to going. No, guys, I got on the right <laughs> uniform. All of you guys got on the wrong uniform and make the whole team go change. But, but Jim, uh, well, I had a heart attack trying to get guys changed into what I was wearing, so I didn't do that. But uh, uh, So I'm, I'm really not that super. I don't walk on the line when I go across the mound, go to the mound or something a little like that. But I don't know. I really, I'm not superstitious. All right, what's your, um, what's your favorite place to recruit and visit? I mean, you go all over the place, I know, so. Uh, Southern California, you know, other than Miami, of course. I mean, I love Southern California. Uh, the weather's great, and got some friends out there, and it's always good weather, and you don't have to worry about the rain. Uh, so I, I like there I've, I've, to recruit. I haven't recruited a lot in Chicago, but I like Chicago. I like New York. Recruited a little bit in both places, but, uh, you know, I, lo I love going to Boston and, and doing different things. But... Uh, I would say Southern California, you know, is, is definitely my favorite place outside of Miami to, to, to go and recruit. So when I, um, every, I mean, I, I've talked to you a few times um, through the past, like, two or three years. Every time you have some crazy story about something you did when you were, you know, back in the day when you were a scout. I remember you told me near Pittsburgh, you almost drove into a river or something like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> the truth. Um, is there one of those stories that you kind of tell a lot or that you like to tell? Because I know that with those type of things, they just, you know, they don't come to mind all the time. But is there one that you definitely tell everyone if you get a chance to? Just recruiting is a crazy deal. I remember one time we lost in the ACC tournament in North Carolina. And, and I uh, jumped on a plane and flew to Cleveland to see a player. And when I got there to get my rental car, my license were expired. And... Uh, so I couldn't rent a car, so then I got on the underground transit system and uh, got to the game about game time, and the guy I went to see let off and dragged bunny and pulled a hamstring, and they took him out of the game. So I had to get a taxi and go back to the underground transit system, get back to the airport, get to the airport, fly to North Carolina to watch a game, and uh, I had somebody pick me up because I couldn't get a rental car, and we drove uh, an hour to the game, and right when I got there, the bottom fell out. So the game was canceled, and I got back. He took me back to the airport, and I came home. <laughs> so, so those are some crazy stories of recruiting. You just, you know, I got absolutely nothing accomplished, <laughs> you know, except frequent fire miles, I guess. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's, 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 sometimes you go out and you see players that uh, you go look at one guy and you fall into another guy. So it's a, it's a, it's a. Sometimes I think a, an educated guess and a little bit of luck on who your players are in that recruiting. When you. Uh Especially in this time of year when you travel around Florida, um, there's a lot of spring training going on, and now there are a lot of canes and on some, even if they're not on the MLB team, they're on the AAA and AA, whatever. Um, do you ever get a chance to see them? Either do they come to visit you guys here, or uh, like if you go over to you know Tampa or Fort Myers or up to maybe Boca um, or Jupiter, I guess, do you, see, uh, do you see them? Do they come by? Do they want to help out if they can? Well, some of them are, of course, more involved than others, and the guys that live out west are not as involved or not around as much. But, you know, when they come in town and they're a major league player and they're playing against the Marlins, that's when I try to go out so I can not only talk with the people of the Marlins and, and talk about different things, but I can also see, you know, players that played for them and see them that way. Spring training, we're going full steam. We're full steam ahead. Uh, when we go to Jupiter and play the Marlins in Jupiter, then I'm able to see the Cardinals, which is John Jay, along with the Marlins guys, Gabby and John Jay, and Chris Perez was when he was with the Cardinals, but guys like that. But I really don't have time to go to uh, spring training games because we're playing every day too and practicing every day, and I don't, I wouldn't feel good about missing practice or a game to go see a spring training game. I wouldn't miss. I don't want to miss any. The only time I ever miss is because of recruiting. Speaking of the Marlins, I know Gabby Sanchez uh, plays for the Marlins. Um, has, have you talked to him at all about how, you know, with, with them moving the new stadium? I don't know if you've been able to see it. Do you, 
I mean, you probably have been to the Orange Bowl. You might have had some, soft, you know, some feelings for that. Do you do you like the new stadium? Have you seen it at all? You know, I look out my window and I watch it build. <laughs> I live in a high rise, so I could actually see it out my uh, my window. I haven't been in it because I knew the first game ever to be played by the Marlins would be against the University of Miami. That's going to be my first time to, uh, to see the ballpark. Our players are very excited about it. I've talked to Gabby a little bit. Gabby works out here and does weight, his weight work here. And uh, his dad owns batting cages, a big complex of batting cages, so he hits there. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I know all the players are excited about it. They shot some of the promos here at uh, uh, all the commercials and stuff here to uh, to run for in TV, so they had Hanley out here and some different guys, and uh, and I, I'm excited to see how Ozzy and and the owner get along. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a treat to watch that. <laughs> I, that I'm friends with Ozzy, so that's gonna be interesting to see how because he don't, he says exactly what he thinks 100 percent of the time. What do you um, I guess what do you think of the uh, the fan support here? I mean, there's always a very good following. Uh, they don't necessarily have to sell out every game, but there's always a lot of people here. I mean, is it does it matter to you guys when you see a lot of people in the stands or not a lot? Does it give you a boost of energy uh, like you know the movies say it does? Of course, it's very important to the players, to everyone, that when you walk out there, people are there. We probably outdraw and bring in more money than any school that's in a big city. You know, we have so much competition, as you well know. I mean, with, uh, with uh, I think our biggest competition really is the heat yeah. because of all the, the uh, Stuff going on with our three top guys, and, and uh, actually Eric Spoelstra is my next tour neighbor, so we get to talk about it a lot, which is fun. And I love going out to the Heat game too and watch it because it's very exciting. And and but we're playing head to head a lot of times, and people are also only have a certain amount of money to spend. And and Miami's been hit very hard with the financial crunch, like a lot of cities. And Miami is hard as anybody, so you got to have enough money. But the real deal at the end of the day, we get the best value. For the amount of money it costs to get a ticket to come in and watch our games, it's a great family atmosphere, and and our players uh, are involved with it. We had a very loyal base of fans that's been coming out forever, forever. And uh, you're talking about the people who've been here a long time. It's the fans, yeah. not me or any coach here. Our fans have been involved in this program forever. Student support. I mean, do you see a lot of student support? I don't know if you get a chance to walk around campus or anything, but do you feel that there's a student support for this team? I think it's okay. It's okay. It could be better. I like to see the students come out more. It's a great facility on campus. And, you know, it's the same thing. Our students have got a lot of stuff to do between studying and going to South Beach or to Grove. Probably to Grove to South Beach is too expensive. But uh, the real deal is, you know, we want the students out. And uh, I don't go on campus very much. You know, I'm kind of secluded over here in the, in the corner. And, uh, you know, I go meet my uh, a meeting at the athletic center or or the president's office when I'm in trouble, or, or or whatever you know, my monthly meeting and being in trouble, I guess. But uh, I don't go on campus a lot. You know, I walk it once in a while. It's a beautiful campus. I've rode my bike around campus a couple of times, but because uh, I live two miles from here in the Grove, and it's very easy to get here. So, well, I mean, would you be willing to do something like Coach Larnaga does when he runs through the freshman dorms or tries to recruit people? Um, would you be doing something like that or send players out to do um, that type of stuff to get the student support? We would. We haven't been given any direction to do that. Uh, now being here 19 years, I've spoke at uh, the fraternities and some different functions uh, for the students. And, and uh, we, we've had a hard time getting students out, it seems like to me, you know, that uh, I've really, I wish we could find what it is. Uh, I know it's beer and pizza. If we could serve those two free to them, they'd all be here, <laughs> which, which we can't do that, <laughs> but uh, knowing students. But, uh, you know, we'd love to have them out, of course, and I think all the coaches have the same concern that, you know, they would like to have more students at the game, have more involvement. The, the students, once they graduate, seem to be more involved in the programs than they are when they're here. So, last question. What, I mean, you look at the rest of the ACC, ACC is usually a decent baseball conference. What what does your competition look like? What do you think your biggest challenge will be this year? 
um, and getting to ranking top 10 super regionals. Well, I mean, first of all, the Atlantic Coast Conference is a great conference. It's a perfect conference for Miami to be in with the academic standing we have and, and the athletic standing. And this is all sports. It's, it's good in all sports. But I, I dare say that the, the baseball is as good as any sport in the ACC and the national rankings. If you look at basketball or football or anything, baseball is as good as anybody. I mean, or better, I think, than anybody the last 10 years as far as having the number of teams ranked in the top 10 consistently is, is in baseball. So it's a conference that's tough from top to bottom. I don't care where you go, you can lose if you don't get after it ready to play the game. And, and everybody's in, improving their facilities. Everybody's trying to win. Everybody's firing their coaches if you don't win, just like, you know, so it's a, it's a tough conference, but it's a great conference to play in. So what, do, is there a team that you have circled on your calendar that's like, we need to beat them, this is the team? Not really. I mean, I don't, I don't really feel that way. I mean, some people might say Georgia Tech because that's where I came from, but that's not the case. I mean, I just, I just want to – North Carolina is the highest-ranked team this year uh, in, in the polls, so that's, that's big. But every weekend we go, you got to beat the people you're supposed to beat, first of all. And don't worry so much about it, other things, but beat everybody you're supposed to beat and then steal a few wins away that you don't and win for some games you don't win, and then you'll be okay. But give it a consistent effort. Make sure the guys, you got to play every day. A Wednesday game is just as important as a Saturday night game against North Carolina just because of RPI and your, and your rankings. Mm -hmm.